Hello, everybody, and happy Tuesday. As we're coming in, I just want to say welcome and thank you for being here. Um, as you're coming in as well, go ahead and let us know um, maybe your role, what you're going to be doing this year. We're starting a new school year, and sometimes that can bring on thoughts of uh, overwhelming thoughts, and many times it can bring on thoughts that are really exciting. And so a couple of things I'd love to hear from you all as we're waiting for everybody to log in is maybe where you're calling in from, uh, something new and exciting that you're hoping to endeavor down this year, um, reason why you're here, maybe, I, uh, the title alone, right, launching the year for staff. We're not talking about students just yet, we're talking about you. And so I'm so excited to be here with you, I'm Jeanette Simonson from Thrively, and we've been hard at work over the summer to make sure that we've created some really great resources for all of you to take back to your colleagues. Um, good, Debbie, positive beginning of the year. I always remember the 20 years I was in the classroom, every new school year was, I'm gonna try something new. And I was so excited to meet the, the students. Um, moving from middle school to high school, teaching Spanish. Uh, Scarlett, I need to, need to do that with you. I've been doing my Duolingo over this uh, summer. But yes, absolutely. Uh, Jamie's a middle school instructional coach. Um, they're going to love to have you supporting. We know the roles of instructional coaches and how they can elevate uh, what we're doing. So today we're super excited to bring to you a couple of strategies and ideas. And I'd like this to be um, as interactive as it can be, of course, with um, me presenting to you. But um, later, I re really want to hear from you know what you're thinking about and what you're hopeful for. I'm going to kind of advance to the next slide for a second so that we can start to really engage our minds. Um, thank you, Lisa from San Diego, and um, thanks, Madhavi. She's putting in a, a Google form. I'm going to share with you some outcomes for this webinar, um, and if you'll think about those outcomes and what you're hoping to accomplish here, um, I'd love to hear from you. We can only get better with your wonderful feedback. So Nebraska, hello. Oh my gosh, I love the fill the cups of my staff. That is awesome. You're gonna love some of the things we have here. Um, I'm a bucket filling uh, person. I read the bucket filling book every year I was in middle school. So super excited. If you resource for you, if you haven't read the bucket filling book, that's a good one too, even for, and then we have Barb from, Rossville, Kansas. I just drove through Kansas. I went to the Oz Museum. That was my highlight. But as you think about what does it feel like to thrive? And that word is being thrown around a lot. Ever since I came to work here at Thrively, I see it everywhere. And I think a lot about what that definition means to us. Thriving. Is that joy? Is that happiness? Is it um, climbing the mountain. Barb, oh, you're 20 minutes. Too bad I didn't meet you last week. I went to the Oz Museum and walked the Yellow Brick Road, but I was thriving in that moment when I was, you know, at the Oz Museum thinking back to my childhood and I was with my two sons and we were doing, trying to recreate the dance on the, uh, on the Yellow Brick Road there in Wamigo, Kansas. Um, what were you doing? Go ahead and reflect on this. If you want to share, put it in the chat. What did it feel like? Why were you thriving? What was it that was creating the conditions to be able to thrive? Um, maybe you were on vacation and you just didn't have all these different things you were thinking about. Maybe you weren't overwhelmed by any negative thoughts or people. Um, maybe you were physically or mentally doing things that helped you to thrive. So as you think about what does it feel like to be thriving? If anybody would like to share, please let me know. Um, Debbie says, feeling good personally and professionally. Yeah. And how do we get there, right? Yes, Teresa, running and just enjoying being outside and alive. I live here in Denver, Colorado, and I just feel like every day I can be in the mountains is a day that I'm outside and I'm breathing in the air. Good. And as we start to engage, we know we're going into a new school year. Um, we're, are things aligning naturally, as Yvonne, uh, um, Yannette says? What does that mean to align? What does that mean? What conditions need to be there? And are you communicating what those conditions are with your colleagues, with your students, with your families, maybe with your administration? Um, yes, Kelly, being challenged, but confident that I'm able to succeed. We're gonna talk a little bit about that confidence piece today. Oh, CrossFit, absolutely. That'll get our endorphins going. And when I don't have to be annoyed by people, absolutely. 
what do we do in those moments? It's going to happen, right? Carrie, it's going to come this year. We're going to have um, people annoy us. In fact, today, even someone annoyed me and I was like, no, nope, I just came off vacation. How do I get back to it? I'm going to reflect on what I want to react to. So like Jamie says, in that state of flow, how do I get into that flow? So we're going to talk a little bit about um, a couple of things. And these are the objectives for today. So as you pull down that, um, that uh, link that Madhavi put in there, we really want to discover what elevates hope. Hope, joy, happiness, they're all kind of intertwined because they create this neuroplasticity in our brain. They create new neural connections. They create uh, really positive hormone increases. We know this from brain science, right? But we also want to incorporate actions. We have choices in how to react or how to create conditions so that we highlight our strengths, other people's strengths. When we highlight other people's strengths, they start to go, oh, you know me, you like me, and you get more out of them. If you're a leader uh, tuning in, you've probably been through all the leadership classes I was in to become a principal and administrator. It's how do we lead with positivity, right? But you also need to continually check in on these hope and well beings because things happen, um, ebb and flow of life, right? And we need to be able to create a plan and communicate that plan with our colleagues and those around us. So we're going to talk a little bit about how Thrively can help you with that. We've got some resources to share with you um, that are also free today. So again, diving in our why. We know that being hopeful has this direct influence on your brain. Hopeful people can bring up the room, okay? When you pair a low hope with a high hope person, well, the reality is, is you pull up that low hope person. And so the work of Dr. Schneider and the work of Kathleen Beachboard that we are aligned with here at Thrively shows that we specifically can create these neuroplasticity moments where our brain grows and we realize I can meet that goal. I can overcome something. Um, who do I lean into? Who are my people, my, my, um, my culture that I can lean into? And then when your brain goes from this anxiety, worry, stress mode, to this evolved joy, confident, as you said, in abundance mode, then we can really tap into being more creative, being more alert, being more engaged, and just in a good mood, which really is thriving, right? Um, so how do we get there? And again, this is not a one and done. This is a, a half an hour today of us kind of diving into a couple of resources, but um, we love to hear from you at Thrively is our, is our Twitter feed. And we'll be doing a lot more this year in terms of engaging with this conversation after we leave uh, the webinars as well. So I just wanna stop real quickly. We've got six questions right here and I don't know if you guys can read them all, but I'm gonna read the first three to you. Super quick way to, to figure out if you're hopeful today. It's a measurement of just today, right? So I think I'm doing pretty well. On a scale of one to six, six being all of the time, one being none of the time, I think I'm doing pretty well. Five, six, hopefully a lot of you are at. Take a mental tally in your head. We're not gonna ask you to share these. Number two, I can think of many ways to get the things in life that are most important to me. So you have all these things that you want out of life, you've been able to really manifest that and you can think of all the ways to get those. Most of the time, all the time, none of the time. I am doing just as well as other people my age, I'll put in here. So as you compare yourself, we know that's a, that's a bad practice to be in with social media. Oh, everyone else is doing better than me. Hmm, probably not true, but it, it's an illusion that's out there. But what do you think? I'm doing just as well. And you can gauge just on those three questions. If you're at the sixes, the five and sixes, or if you're the ones and twos, do you need help being pulled up into the hope category or do you need to pull somebody else up? And when we share this information and these six questions can be shared with students across your school district, um, it can be shared with your own kids and really a check-in every 90 days is what we do here at Thrively for you. So I'll share with you some resources where you can give this to all staff. Staff would take 12 questions. It takes about two, three minutes to take. Wouldn't it be amazing if you knew the hope levels of every member that is in your school, every adult from the person who's driving the bus and the, the, the support staff to your administration, Sometimes your administration's feeling low and needs a little pull up. Maybe they just need you to come in and go, well, you're doing a great job. Those little things we do can pull somebody's hope levels up. So 
again, I'm going to share this presentation with you. And as you see here, and I'm not going to play the video, but you can watch it later. One of the questions is I worry about my health and they can scroll. The students and the staff can scroll and say yes all the time. No, none of the time. And you can start to see where they fall because we measure what matters. Remember that. And so if we know that we're low hope, we're going to figure out ways to bring up high hope. We know too, and I just actually got an article from Positive Psychology Today that talked about this ripple effect. If research says that 40% of happiness comes from the choices we make, wait a minute, 40%? Okay, so if I'm in a victim mode and I'm saying all oh, this stuff's happening to me, can I pull back and say, what 40% can I control? I bet that'll tip the scales. And so what choices am I making every day? Am I getting up earlier and doing yoga? Am I making sure that I'm you know, making time to make a good lunch so that I have healthy choices? Um, am I greeting people at the door? Sometimes just that, that energy put out that you put out there can, can put that out there. So I want you to just quickly in the chat and you guys might have some crazy awesome ideas out there. What's one choice we can make as we start to, to launch the school year? What's a choice you can make to increase happiness in your building? And I'm just talking about our, our staff. So you go to your first day of PD or the first day you walk in the school, and you're getting your classroom ready or you're an administrator and you're, um, you're coming in contact with others. What are some simple choices we can make? Yes, Scarlett, smile and make eye contact, okay? It's our, it's our energy levels. Yes, take time to greet colleagues, learn names. Yes, of course. Beyond that, learn their strengths. Uh, when we start to get to know our teammates, we're like, I got that, you know, that's my strength. How about you work on this part? When we work on the things that we're good at and that we really like to do, suddenly we're thriving, right? I know I don't like spreadsheets and details, so I have colleagues to lean in. Reach out to staff and students on how they're doing. Yeah, I love the one where the, um, there's a video in Edutopia that they're you know, showing the, the woman who's doing the hand signals and each of them mean different things. Have meals with them. They took those away from us when I was in Chicago public schools. And I loved sitting down and just having chats with, how's the day going? What do you like? What do you dislike? Oh, I hate the green beans. I don't want to eat them anymore. Positivity, exactly. When you exude the positivity, you raise the room. Remember that. It's actually, unfortunately, a responsibility of ours to realize that we have a responsibility to bring great ener energy into the room. And if our energy is low, to let people know we need a little boost, right? Empathy, uh, Luis, perfect. And take time to know people. So we're gonna talk a little bit, these are great examples, you guys. And if you have resources, please feel free to add them in the chat so that others can, can, um, can learn from you too. So we do steps to choosing hope, joy, happiness, thriving, right? They all equal thriving. So how do we get rid of the ne negativity? You know, other people are bringing us down. Maybe they're not feeling great. We could ask questions. We could try to bring their focus into a more positive lens. Um, sometimes we dwell on our past mistakes and we start to think how, how we're being judged. Um, how do we get ourselves through that? And certainly the overwhelmed part we've all known about for the last couple of years, probably the entire time you've been a teacher, because I remember back to day one. So again, these little choices we can make is make a goal right now after you get off this webinar or tomorrow morning, set a goal for yourself that's focusing on the good around you? What are all the good things that are happening in the world today, in your circumstances, in your school? Maybe you, you create a list, an ongoing list of all the great things that you're hearing, you're seeing, because we know we correct bad behavior, but bad behavior is just a way to have communication happen. And so if we reframe it in an asset-based mind, we start to think about, well, maybe that was a good thing that that student you know, communicated through behavior. Now we don't want that behavior to happen again, but how can we reframe it? And again, we've always been told send positive notes as a leader of a building. Those handwritten notes were so important. Instructional coaches that are out there, send personal notes, even a $5 gift card for somebody who went above and beyond for you know, creating some sort of um, resource in your school. But positive notes to colleagues and students go a really long way. Positive emails to families we know go a long way. And then we have to celebrate. When we set those goals and we have benchmarks and those milestones, we have to celebrate them. So who's on your committee that's your social committee that's having those, um, those opportunities, right? We've got to make sure that we set the stage for this to happen. We also need to make sure that we're in a safe environment. So we've, you know, for 10, 10 years, we've been talking about designing learning spaces. 
I picked a, a, a colorful one today to kind of share with you, but making sure that we're creating our space. As you guys are building your space, does it exude positivity? Does it share quotes that you love and that you know your students will engage with? Um, does it have pictures of things that remind you of your summer or the people you love or the things that keep you going throughout the day? And certainly um, as we start to get those hormone levels, colors and plants and different things that we put around the room are gonna be really important to create this classroom home environment. Um, if you guys, guys have any other ideas as to how to create this space, please put it in the chat as well. But even lighting um, can make a big difference. Um, having choice and, and how we sit can make a big choice too. So uh, think about those things and you know share, share your ideas with others. But again, as you notice the space I shared with you, there was a lot of room for moving about. Um, a lot of our classrooms in the past had had like, you know, a lot of desks and rows and things. We're getting away from that so that we can have more movement. And even, you know, I used to teach math, get, a, get them up and acting out some of the math techniques, some of the fractions, moving about, going to different corners and making sure that you're seeing that there's movement involved because that does get the brain stimulated and moving. So in your PDs, are you sitting? Are you sitting like this and writing down notes and doodling? Or should we maybe recognize that we all need to get up and move around? Maybe we need to have a standing table. Maybe we need to have moments where we're really reconnecting with other people. So make those suggestions to, um, to the people who are running your PD, absolutely. So think about ways you can get moving in your classroom, but also ways that you can make sure I saw somebody say that we're doing CrossFit, get moving in your life. Um, and this one, I, I wanna share obviously um, this a little bit. Well, if you haven't watched this TED talk, Robert Waldinger talks about what makes um, a good life. And he did a very, very long research study on this, but number one, it's relationships. So you talked about walking in, smiling, greeting them. How are you doing? Uh, tell me something I don't know about you. Smiling and, and engaging people is what sets us up for a healthy life. So of course it's gonna set us up for a healthy um, opportunity inside of our classrooms too. So inside this TED talk, let me pop this up for a second. I'm gonna jump over. I'm gonna start up here. Oh, oops. Oh, you can't hear anything. Oh, I tested the volume and you know what? I'm on my son's computer because my Mac died. So maybe, you know what? Let's do this instead of losing time, which I don't like doing. Let's do this. I'm going to share this with you guys. It's also, I'm going to share, whoops, let me um, copy this. I'm going to put it in the chat so you guys can watch it later. Um, okay. Whoops, that's Google. Oh, give me one second. There we go. Um, but anyway, Robert Waldinger talks a little bit about happiness and he says, bottom line, it's the people in your life. It is the people you choose to have in your life and it's the relationships that support you that actually lead to happiness. So if we're making choices, we're talking about choices and things you can do. Choose wisely who you associate with at lunch. Choose wisely who you spend time with after school. Certainly there's not always choices in maybe who we have to spend time with, but how can we then, even for people who may you know, be feeling a little down and bringing down the room, how can we create an empathetic ear so that we can bring them up as well? Since we know relationships matter, they're the number one thing in this long you know, eight decade study. So we really need to put our focus on that. And that's where Thrively comes in because we want to make sure, let me jump, sorry, it's, Saying it again. We wanna make sure that we are creating opportunities for you guys to engage in creating this space. Um, because if we know that hope creates better learning environments, it creates happiness, it creates endorphins, it creates all of this um, opportunity for learning, then we need to put that first and foremost. And a recent study came out that said one of the most important things we can do as educators to have our kids lead hopeful lives and be academically successful is to make sure we're taking care of ourselves. 
that we are showing our hopeful selves. If we're showing that, oh, you know, no, we're not going to get that, you know, they're going to feed off of it, but you guys can do it. And we're going to do it together. And I'm going to show you strategies on how to do it. And please join us. We're going to have a whole series on hope where we're going to dive deeper into hopeful practices, but you must be hopeful, joyful, and happy yourself. And I'm not saying every day, but try to do it as much as you can, right? So as we start to choose and build and maintain joy, we're going to release negativity. We're going to create a safe home, right? We're going to definitely oops, have movement and exercise. We're going to build strong relationships and we're going to practice gratitude, right? Because we know that these five things are going to bring us to a place where our brains are fully functioning. What Thrively is going to do is provide for you an opportunity to measure this. So we have something called a culture of care. And if you are administrators or people who are working on a SEL uh, lens, we definitely want to measure hope and well-being in all of our staff members. We want to make sure we prioritize this. We, we say, take the survey and know that we're going to take the survey data and we're going to do something with it. And we're going to make sure we discover and celebrate people's strengths. So the culture of care that we've created this audit really starts with two short hours. This could be broken up into PD hours. This could be broken up over the course of six months, but educators can learn how to check in on themselves and share that with counselors or administrators. Because if I'm having a hard day, maybe I have a, an accountability partner I can lean into creating that environment. We're gonna establish baseline goals based on our hope levels and also create an action plan so that the whole staff is feeling like we're all bucket filling and we're all aware of who needs to have their bucket filled. The second hour in Thrively's culture of care really talks about self-awareness. And these are the practices that we do, the things that they said, the choices we have. So, you know, using the strength assessment to highlight our strengths and the strengths of others, take time to reflect on moments when we've had a challenge or we might have had needed some resiliency to get through it, who helped us through it and certainly that celebration piece. Um, with the digital portfolio and the goals and the badging and, and all of the things that I'm gonna roll out in the next couple of minutes, you're gonna see celebration be a big part of this. So the first thing you can do, and again, I'll share this presentation with you. There's a, a, a button here that you can link to, but you can share this with your admin team. You're gonna take the hope, the hope culture survey. It's a quick audit to really see where everybody, all the adults in the room, feel? Are they hopeful? Are they feeling supported? Um, do they feel like they have <clears throat> attainable goals? Do they feel like they can have agency over getting through those goals? They, actually, Dr. Schneider talks about willpower and way power. So breaking up your goals into those two different means can also help you identify what are some skills that I need to work on. So when you take this survey, then if you're on a committee that's analyzing it, you can start to say, well, where is my staff on a level of hope you know, and, and what kind of supports do we need to create so that we can start to build a hopeful culture? The second thing that you'll see that is a digital form here when I send out the presentation is you can look at your results and then go back to the questions and see, well, where do we need to create a plan of action? You might be really high in some areas, but other areas, everybody's saying this is where we want to focus. So that's your priority number one. Thrively has the tools to built in to support this culture. Already built in systems, and the digital form, again, you can click right here and you can go to a document, make a copy and make it your own. You can do this with a small group. Maybe you might just want to do this with a grade level team if you're not feeling ready to do it with the full school. Or you can choose maybe a, a small circle of colleagues that you know are sort of on a committee leading this. And do it yourselves and practice this first. And when you start to do that small team, you roll it out full school, you can start to then see, okay, we can do this with our students as well. And that will be the following webinar. Um, and I see we have a question, so let me pop in. Um, yes, actually, Luis, I'll send it in just a few minutes as soon as I am done. Thank you very much for asking that because I know maybe somebody has to go early. So real quickly, we measure hope in a couple of different ways. As I mentioned, agency and pathway. So you'll see here, in a district administration uh, capacity or counselor or somebody who's looking at this data, you're not gonna see names necessarily, but I might see that I have some moderate agency and hope levels. I can measure this every 90 days to see if my interventions are working, creating certain systems around this. And if our hope levels are going up, we know the interventions we're doing are, um, are working. And then of course, 
what Thrively was founded on was strengths. Definitely measure all of your teachers' strengths and uh, pair them up in PDs according to heterogeneous groups so that we have one person who's really verbal and another person who's you know, cognitive and creative. And you can start to really mesh people together based on their strengths so they get to know each other in a different fashion. So two really quick assessments you can do is the HOPE culture audit so we can identify where we are as, as um, hopeful people. And then of course, get to know our strengths. This can take again, anywhere from half an hour to 45 minutes to establish at the beginning of the school year so that you have that data. The second thing that I wanted to make sure you knew that was here were educator certifications. Cause again, I'm not gonna tell you everything today in 30 minutes, but on your dashboard, you have a couple of different things. You'll see the dashboard actually has changed this year a little bit. So it may look a little different. Reach out to your account manager or someone here at Thrively and we're happy to help you through it. But go down to certifications and you can click on this little um, tab here and it'll open up to your certification journey. And mine says um, continue, but yours will say start certification. So again, these are self-directed courses that you can take to learn more about how you can infuse hope in your life and in the lives of others. There's also an educator self-care unit one, and there's a foundations of strength unit one. So if you're looking for PD offerings that are self-directed, go no further. We've got them here ready for you. And again, you can have somebody kind of lead that and maybe bring some of these practices back to your building. Um, we're here at thrive at thrively.com. And Javi, if you want to throw our email address in, in the uh, chat, um, please reach out to us if you need further assistance with any kind of PD, because we do Zoom and um, live support as well. Um, let me see, there's another question up here. Yeah, all right, awesome. Now, I'm just gonna take a moment um, and kind of pause here. I wanna see if there's any questions and any thoughts. Is there anything that just kind of jumped out at you recently that you're like, oh, that's a great idea. How do I get access to that? Please feel free to type that in the chat. I am gonna go ahead and grab this presentation here. So you can know that. And of course, we're going to be sending out. Oops, we're going to be sending out um, a webinar with. Oh no! There we go. That's YouTube. We're going to be sending out the webinar to you in just a few days to make sure that you have access to everything that's here. Um, and of course, we're always here for follow-up conversations. So take a minute and fit, uh, fill out that Google form for us. Copy as I'm getting ready to paste. Yep. Yeah. Hope survey, Lisa, uh, is dramatically profound, especially when you give it to staff and students and you start to really think about um, the impact that's, that hope can have just a little bit. Um, it, the hope survey can be anonymous. Um, we can certainly set it up that way, but I'll caution you. You probably don't want it to be only because, um, and again, the person who's analyzing the data needs to be a comp, you know, keep it in confidence. Um, but again, this is a conversation that you would have with your account manager or somebody who's administering this to your organization, but you can do it both ways. So sometimes you just want it to be anonymous to get a gauge on how everybody's feeling. Other times we wanna make sure that we're targeting and giving supports to the appropriate people. So it just kind of depends on what you're looking for. But great questions. Okay, um, so again, Create a Thrively Educator account. You probably already have one today because you were able to log in onto um, the webinar, but you can always invite your colleagues to this, have them go along the journey. The strengths and the hope survey are both free, everybody. And then again, thank you for all that you do. You already do things that are amazingly joyful and happy and promote this hopeful uh, classroom environment. Um, share, create some sort of community where you're sharing that out. We're starting to talk about parent engagement things. We'll have another webinar that's coming up. And in fact, we're gonna have webinars every two weeks that are around a specific topic that kind of addresses the needs that you all have. So in our newsletters, tune in to some questions that we're asking, because we're gonna be doing, um, bringing in expert panelists and different people to help us really guide you through the school year. But the culture of care audit and of course uh, the strengths are super important to start that school year off. Know your own strengths, connect with others on them and certainly reach out to thrive at thrively.com if you feel as if you need any more information about this. Um, and thank you all for being here.